Good night, thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you again. Uh, this really is an amazing feeling, standing here on the stage with this bust and this beautiful statue of Mark Twain. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a strange thing to get an award for being funny, because when I started out doing stand-up, I didn't do it to get awards. I did it for money, a lot of money. <laughs> it's really all I wanted. Um, this, uh, to, to everyone, first of all, to everyone who flew out here uh, to be here, uh, I, I thank you, Jimmy and John and Jason and John again and Loudon and Kristen and Steve and Lily and uh, Sean and Jane and... Uh, Thank you for being a part of this PBS uh, show. And uh, I realize now, with all the gay presenters and a lot of you tonight, this could have been on Bravo. It easily could have been... <laughs> different. <laughs> it's kind of hard to stand on stage uh, and follow all those very, very funny people uh, to, you know, to come up after they've spoken. Um, to be honest, when they called me and they asked who I would like to speak before me, I said, Ken Burns. That's who I wanted. <laughs> would have been easier. <laughs> Thanks to everyone at PBS. I am so happy to be a part of your farewell season. This is wonderful. <laughs> And, uh, and really, to whoever found all those clips, uh, thank you for sharing them with everyone. Uh, what a wonderful trip down memory lane and a little detour down Mullet Street. That was, um... <laughs> I, of course, want to thank Mark Twain. Is he here tonight? Is anyone? <laughs> you see him, thank him. Uh, I've never read Mark Twain, but to, to be uh, fair, he never saw my HBO special, so I guess that's... <laughs> It's really incredible. When I heard that I was going to be getting this award and traveling to our nation's capital, I was so excited. I thought, this is a big deal to go to New York City and accept this. This is... <laughs> and then people were like, you know, New York is not the capital. I was like, I know, I know. And I love Boston, so... <laughs> They're like, it's not Boston. No. So long story short, I'm happy to be here at the Kennedy Center where so many space shuttles have been launched. What a... <laughs> I don't know where I am. I'm extremely <laughs> grateful. I can't believe my life. I, uh, I have Emmys, and I have People's Choice Awards, and I have a Peabody, and now a Mark Twain Prize, and who knows, maybe someday a mirror ball with Dancing with the Stars. That would be, <laughs> of course, the goal. Actually, this is uh, technically, it's not an award. I was, it's a prize. Y'all are very particular with your words. It's intimidating, actually, to speak to a bunch of smart and educated people but I'm no dummy. Let me just say, you all look foreboding tonight. <laughs> it really is amazing. It's funny how the universe guides you to where you're meant to be. Um, I really, I, I did not know what I wanted to do in life. I had no um, intention on becoming a comedian. I was, I wanted to make people happy. I wanted to make my mother laugh. My parents were divorced when I was young and my mother was sad a lot and I just wanted to make her laugh. And um, I had no idea I could make a, a living, that there would be a career in making people happy. And as you saw earlier when I was uh, speaking at Tulane, I, I tried everything. I was, uh, I shucked oysters, I painted houses, I sold vacuum cleaners, I was a court runner. Um, but there was always a voice saying you should be doing something different. And it was usually my boss and I was being fired, but I would... <laughs> so... <laughs> I started working at, at, at uh, comedy clubs, uh, places like uh, the Chuckle Hut and the Giggle Factory and strip malls, and I know it sounds glamorous, but... <laughs> it, if you like really drunk people yelling out, why aren't you wearing a dress? <laughs> My mother would show up sometimes. <laughs> I'm grateful 
that I played all of those. I'm, I'm so grateful that I struggled, that I played very, very difficult. I mean, I would play anywhere. It wasn't just comedy clubs, because there weren't a lot of comedy clubs when I was starting out in New Orleans. I would play anywhere. I, it didn't matter if it had a stage. I, would, I, I played a restaurant one time. It was this long, narrow restaurant. And when I showed up, there was a chalkboard on the sidewalk that said, Soup of the Day, Broccoli, and Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> and soup got the top billing, and that was... <laughs> you can imagine, by the time I actually made my first appearance on Johnny Carson, uh, I was so nervous and excited, and of course the outfit was very important. Um... <laughs> I had no idea what to wear, and, and while I really try to have no regrets in my life, it was a bad choice. The outfit was <laughs> the one that I was doing the phone call to God. It was like a giant, like a tablecloth type shirt with huge pants, and it was just a bad outfit, possibly because Sinbad helped me pick that outfit out. <laughs> that is actually true. I don't know why I thought I should take fashion advice from Sinbad, but I did. It's where my self-confidence was at the time, and I, I've gained self-confidence since then, and I've, I've come a long way. Tonight, Tim Allen picked this out, and... <laughs> I never could have imagined that my life uh, would, would end up this way. I didn't think I'd end up having my own show. I didn't think I'd end up being in movies. I didn't think I'd have a talk show. I didn't think that I would be a cover girl. I just thought that I would be a closeted gay comedian wearing parachute pants the entire... <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is aim low. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for this award. Thank you to the Hollywood Foreign Press. Are they involved in any way? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, to everyone that I work with every day, my executive producers, my writers, my team of people that support me and love me and give me so much joy. You are my family. Uh, I, I couldn't do what I do without you. I love you all. And Portia, what can I say? You have the most beautiful, talented, amazing wife. <laughs> I mean, The Mark Twain Prize is an absolute honor, and I would like to end by sharing my favorite Mark Twain quote, don't you worry your pretty little mind. People throw rocks at things that shine, and life makes love look hard. That was actually Taylor Swift, but she does have a point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody.